Welcome to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Scott, and together we will dive into the lives and careers of the jazz legends who have left a rhythmic imprint on the world. Be prepared to reminisce on the highs and the lows of their musical journey and the trials that sculpted their timeless musical gems. We'll preserve the legacy of these extraordinary maestros and find inspiration in the melodies of their lives. Subscribe now and never miss a beat. Now, let's get to the show. Welcome to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I am Daryl Scott. You just heard a, a tune called Stone Cold from a young lady whose name is Pamela Williams. However, she goes by the Saxtress. And we'll, we'll get into why you are called the Saxtress, even though I think I know, but I think our listeners want to know. So, Pamela, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm great. And you are? I'm Daryl Scott. You oh, I know. You know. How are you doing? <laughs> Uh, see, you, you got well? me all nervous and everything now. Uh, I, I am fine. Um, I'm sure where you are, it is warm. Where we are, it's a wee bit chilly. So, uh, but fortunately, I, I, I am inside and, and doing well. Let me start this off by, for people that don't know your history, um, you're a saxophone player. And my first question to saxophone players is, I know there's 19 different saxophones. Which ones do you play? Mm -hmm. Well, I play mostly alto. That's like my favorite one. And next in line would be the soprano sax, which is the one that's straight, but you've seen the straight ones. They can be curved too, but they're real small. Right. And the difference is the pitch is quite higher. And I also play tenor, which is the one with the curved mouthpiece. And that's the big one. So I haven't been touched on baritone just yet, but I would like to eventually get one, but they're so big. I don't know if I can can swing with the baritone I'm not sure <laughs> all right so how did you gravitate to the saxophone why did you choose that um instrument? well I always loved the saxophone um and I always wanted to be a musician and at first it wasn't really the saxophone it was I just wanted to play anything I think I remember um elementary school I tried to get an instrument and I tried to get the violin but they didn't have more available and I ended up playing the, you know, the little bells that you play at the Christmas shows. I ended up with the little xylophone. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, I don't, it's still a musical instrument. Okay, that's something. I'll take it <laughs> if that's all you guys have left. And um, in middle high, in middle school, I tried to join the jazz band. They had a middle school jazz band, but the the director, who's this really famous saxophone player around Philadelphia, named, named Tony Williams, he, he wanted to let me in, but he was like, but you, do you already know how to play it? And I said, no, I don't. I would have to learn. He says, I'm sorry, we're only accepting people who already know how to play. Um, but that point, you know, I wasn't, by that time that I graduated from junior high, I was in high school. And then I'm, I'm like, I'm never going to get a chance to be a musician, but I'm going to, I saw a poster around school that said musicians desperately needed in a, you know, high school band in a concert band. And so I was like, maybe this is my opportunity. And I went, and talk to the musical director. And the only thing he had available was clarinets though. And I really didn't want the clarinet because <laughs> I was thinking, I, I don't hear clarinet in any Earth, Wind & Fire songs or any <laughs> Ohio players. <more. laughs> so okay. I, I said the clarinet, like, I was like, do you have, um, I think I mentioned the saxophone. I mentioned the talk, drums, anything but the clarinet. And he said, well, I'm sorry, we need clarinet players. He's like, but I tell you what, the clarinet is very similar to the saxophone. So if you play this now for one year, next year, you know, I'll give you a saxophone. And if you take it home over the summer and learn how to play it, then I'll let you play sax in the jazz band. And so that's that's how I ended up with the saxophone. So you're you're playing saxophone and you're and you're you're in high school or or whatever. Mm -hmm. What what was the what was the defining moment when you said 
this is my instrument. This is going to be my life. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, the defining moment. Uh, <laughs> I think um, once I got turned on to listening to Grover Washington Jr. albums and I was listening to what he was doing on the recordings, I was just blown away because it was like a, a nice comp. Because I grew up listening to R&B and, and jazz too. Um, and I thought, what a nice blend of the two genres. And he's doing it in a way where it's mainstream and they're playing it on the radio and it's mm -hmm. funky and it's jazzy at the same time. Um, I just, once I took the saxophone home for that summer and I learned how to play it and I just spent the whole summer in the basement, in my parents' basement and I just wouldn't even play with my friends. I was like, I've got to <laughs> learn this. I'm not coming outside. You know, they were knocking on my back door like, what you, come on, where, where are you? come out and play it. You know, this isn't like you to not come out and like socialize and hang out. And I'm like, hey, I got to learn this instrument because I got to get in that jazz band when I go back to school in September. So I just, um, just once I started getting uh, the hang of the instrument, I just fell in love with it. And, and I got in that jazz band. It was like everything to me. That was like my, my hang, you know, throughout the whole school year. I was always in the music room and we started doing these jazz competitions um, around on the, well, it started out in Philadelphia, but then our rhythm section was Pieces of a Dream because I grew up right around the corner from them. Really? And you have Kurt, yeah, Curtis Harmon, Pieces of a Dream, Cedric Napoleon, Curtis Harmon. They're the rhythm section of the jazz band. So they were, by that time, they were already making albums. As a matter of fact, they were actually doing some concerts with Grover Washington. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh my God, they're, these guys are actually little, little jazz stars already. And we're still, in, we're in high school. And they're touring over Washington. And so I remember Grover came to our high school and he was in the music room and I was too scared to go over to talk to him. But I was like, oh my God, he's like right there and there's no one else in the room. This is my opportunity. And I was just like shy, you know, little, I was like, I don't, he's a star. I don't know what to say. And so I didn't say anything to him. Uh, he just kind of smiled and I waved to him. Um, and so we started doing these competitions around the country and started really winning. And um, I, I had a, my first solo was This Masquerade mm -hmm. <laughs> by George okay. Benson, who I absolutely loved as a, as a kid as well. And just the, just that, just the response from the audience and, and just touring with that jazz band, like on those, like we went to Florida and won like the national jazz competition. And it was just exciting. I'm like, this is just, I love how music makes, I love how music makes me feel. And so I love how it makes other people feel when you're when you're playing music as well so i just knew at that point this is something i'm going to keep doing it, it, it is funny that you yeah. mentioned grover or and pieces of a dream uh mm -hmm. relatively good friends with cedric napoleon um okay I actually, I actually interviewed him at one time and he said he we're sitting down doing the interview and we, we we're kind of changing locations going from one side of the restaurant to the other he goes here take mm -hmm. my bass and think play like look like you're gonna play it so i play it and okay. don't get me wrong, I turned it upside down because if I play a bass, if I play anything, I play left-handed. And the look on his face was, what is wrong with you? I go, nothing, dude, this is what I do. If I were to play uh -huh. anything, I play left -handed. I throw right-handed. I'm ambidextrous. I can write with both. Wow. Hands. Yeah, okay. so okay. it was pretty weird. He just looked at me and goes, I can't help you. I can't help you. I said, okay, fine. And then Grover <laughs> and I had a relationship um, when I was in radio, had interviewed him several occasions to the point where we we were doing an interview on the day that Nelson Mandela got released. So I go, wow. I'm, 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 sometimes you don't know how to act with people. I just asked a question. I said, I, I know, I don't know if this will affect you at all, but just tell me how you feel. I said, how do you feel mm -hmm. about Nelson Mandela being released? And there's mm -hmm. a silence and I'm like, I feel my head being lopped off right now and it's just going to fall on the floor. And he had done several interviews that day and he says, you know, nobody's asked me about that all day long. And he went on for 10 minutes expounding about wow. that. I, I, okay. I and, and, and I think in my world, in my tenure of, of playing jazz or being involved with jazz, mm -hmm. he is my number one saxophonist, number one by far. Uh, and I've talked to a couple other people who say, He's the guy. He's the he's the the master class person. All right, enough about me. 
Okay. <laughs> I fall into those. I fall into those traps all the time. Is there other than Grover? Do you have any other influences? Um, it's you know, it's it's so many, you know, it's and it's they're all so different and they're all so wonderful. Like one of the I, I always tell every saxophone player, if you don't know who Charlie Parker is, you mm. should listen to him. Mm -hmm. No matter what type of music you're gonna end up playing, like you're gonna play the saxophone, I think on any level, in any genre, I think study study what he was doing. Um John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, he's my straight ahead guy that mm -hmm. I try to emulate what he was doing. And some of it is so like technic technical and fast. It's like, it's amazing. <laughs> You're trying to grasp it. It's like, what is he doing? Like, and he's able to just do it so fast and change keys. And so I, um, I ended up buying a couple of his music books where they transcribed the solo so you can actually see on paper what he's playing and so i think studying that stuff helped me with some some of my bebop style that i'll you every now and then the, i'll it'll be in a, in a solo depending on what song mm -hmm. i'm playing i'll i'll go into that mode on during my solo and it's just that's trying to study people like like that and of course john coltrane and like um i like the saxophone player from Spiral Gyro and Hank Crawford and David mm -hmm. Sanborn mm -hmm. and who d who David Sanborn I when I heard his music I really liked him and I, the reason I realized I liked him so much is because he liked Hank Crawford and I remember mm -hmm. someone turning me on to him when I started playing the saxophone and he had great style too um I just think for me I just it's always been my favorite and I always make reference to Grover's that I was just able to kind of just vibe with him and I, I always say that he was actually my saxophone teacher because that's really how I learned like like mm -hmm. when I got the instrument in school basically the, the musical director was like look you're on your own here's a book take this home learn those scales and basically you were on your own you know it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one, I'm going to give you music lessons I, so I really didn't have a teacher the only teacher I really had was were those Grover Washington albums and I would put those on and that's basically how I learned, I like um, Wilton Felder on tenor mm -hmm. from the Crusaders. I think right. his style, I used to listen to him a lot. I, I think, are, so are you, I don't want to say, I don't think classically is the right word. So you're trained by ear, not necessarily by having a teacher up in front of you and telling you what to do. Right, right. Basically, yeah. The only time I've ever, I have short, this is an interesting short time very short <laughs> but it was it was interesting because I um after I started playing and and I was like I really want to know how to go to the next level like I'm listening yeah I'm listening how I learned how to improvise was just basically by ear mostly and then like I said earlier I got some music books so I could see visually like mm -hmm. what what is actually going on here theoretically musically what what is it I can hear it, but what is it? What does it mean in terms of scales and 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 chord progressions and stuff like that? And so, I ended up. I wanted to. I was like, maybe I should really get with a teacher. They can take me to another level. So, someone introduced me to a guitar player in Philadelphia who was a little old Italian man, um, but he played guitar. He didn't play sax. And so, went to the. I think I had maybe five lessons with this guy. He was. He was actually. John Coltrane's teacher. Wow. And I was like, this is so interesting. I said, so you're a guitar player. And I, when I was expecting him to be a saxophone player, when someone gave me his number, he says, no, I play guitar. I went there. He, he was, it was really interesting. He just gave me, he wrote out scales right on the spot. He said, you take these home, you listen to them. He says, don't try to make sense of it theoretically. He says, you just play. He said, you play what I wrote. He's like, let your ear hear he let your ear guide you and so I did that for I maybe had like five lessons with him and at that point I um got my big break with Patty LaBelle and so I didn't continue those lessons I just started playing around sit you know, around Philadelphia once I got that break with Patty I was just gone from that point
I have known about your career for a long time. I won't say when I first when I first heard your music because that's a long time ago, uh, and we're both only fourteen or fifteen years old. Um, so, <laughs> so let's go with this. Uh -huh. How did you get the nickname the Saxtress? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who we were just listening to albums, um, kicking it, listening to some music. And we were listening to Anita Baker. And, and I used to love the big album covers, mm -hmm. you know, because we could see the artwork, and the right. photo, and you could tell the line. And so the name of the album was called Songstress. Yes. And I, and so I said, wow, what a, you know, we were like, that is just what a cool name for 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 a female artist, a female singer, songstress. And so my friend said, well, you're a saxophone player. You're a female saxophone player. You should call yourself the saxstress. And I was like, that's got a ring to it. I said, you know what? When I do my first CD, she's like, you're probably going to be famous. She's like, if you keep doing this the way you play, you keep going. One day you'll be famous. She's like, you should call yourself the saxstress. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to do that. If I get a chance to record an album, that's going to be my my stage name, like my trademark stage name. And so my first CD, um, I decided to call it the Factors. Now the label didn't want to call it that. They wanted it to be something like, like, um, just something corny. That I was like, no, something like lipstick and something. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, it's got to be a name that I can use for the rest of my career if I'm going to keep doing this. It's got to be something that sounds kept, you know, catchy. Right, it's got to right. describe what I'm doing. And it's got to, I'm going to put the sax stress at the end because you're going to know it's a female doing, playing an instrument that's predominantly been a male instrument. So I was like, the CD's got to be called sax stress. And so that's how I got the stage name. Nice. And it, and, and it, it fits you. It, it is, Sometimes you you either hear things or you you see things, or you take nicknames, and and do they really fit? Sometimes a nickname is just a nickname, but sometimes a nickname mm -hmm. is your is your personality, and that that does fit you. Here's a question that that I, I want to talk about. There are, for the longest time, jazz was a male dominated field. It was, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then you come along, and, and other women come along and make a impression um, in the world of jazz. How do you feel that women in jazz are growing, having an effect, and, and you're a part of that? And don't don't ever take that away. You are a part of that. You are a, you're, you're, I can't even think of the word right now, but go ahead and talk. <laughs> um, well, I, I do, I think that, um, yeah, I'm aware that I did have to knock some doors down um, in the past in the music industry because when I started doing this professionally and record as a recording artist, there really weren't any female saxophone players um, and not that many female jazz musicians in general. I, right, yeah. You know, we had Bobby Free on flute. She had, a, you know, everyone knew about her. Sat so we're down. like, wow, you know, this is a jazz artist. She's doing contemporary jazz like the men and she's, blowing flute and it's incredible and she she got really famous doing that and so by the time I did it I think everybody says well there was Candy Dolfer who was also recording but she was really from I think Amsterdam something like one that. of those countries yeah so I was like she's not really American and I she got her start with Prince and she was touring with him but um there was really not really anybody doing it and so and it wasn't easy getting to into that genre because I remember talking to, even though I was touring at this point, I was touring with Patti LaBelle. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized at that point, okay, I want to do a solo project. You know, I think I can do it. And I was, you know, we'd hang out with some of the guys from MCA Records, some of the big wigs there. And they, I would try to talk to them. Like, I would be interested in, because they had, um, um who's my, my guy at the time? Um, George Howard. Yeah. They had George Howard on, on the on MCA records. Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well, they've got MCA, they've got a sax player. And so I, I I used to we used to hang out with the vice president of MCA. He's come to all the Patty LaBelle concerts. And so as we were hanging out, I was like, well what about you know I'm interested in doing 
a solo career as a saxophone player, can you tell me the steps? And he'd be like, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> he, he was like, I don't, he said, no, no one's going to take a female saxophone player seriously. Like his, he, it wasn't any words of encouragement. It was like, yeah, you need to just forget about that because no one's going to take it. He's like, it's never been done before. No one's done it. And I was like, that doesn't mean it, it can't, can't happen. Right, right. Right. You know, you've got to start somewhere. And so I ended up, <clears throat> I was, I was not discouraged. I kind of was like <clears throat> angry about it. Like, I mean, come on, this has got to be, it can't, doors can't be closed to us just because we're women playing these instruments. And so I just kept going, you know, and I, I was like, there's got to be like another way um, to do this. And so I think um, we still are struggling as women sometimes. Like, believe it or not, after 10, CD, 10 CDs, 9 CDs, I think with a couple of compilation, one compilation in there, I'll still get <laughs> some calls from my manager and be like, this promoter was hired. He's like, look, I don't know what the women are bringing, so I'm not sure about you on the show. You know, so you still get that from wow. some people that kind of don't know your, they don't know your history. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. maybe this oh, yeah. is, this is a new promoter that hasn't been into the genre of the whole or the, or the promotion business, period. They've just getting get, getting into the promotion of jazz and they may not know your his my history. Right. So they don't know. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know what your show's like. I don't know what you're bringing. I don't know if you can bring it. Like the men. I mean, basically, this is what this guy said. Right. And, you know, I said, well, you know, hey, listen, we're we're women. We're out here. We're doing this. Um, you need to, you know, get on YouTube. <laughs> we have yeah, the internet yeah. now. You right. can, you can check references, you know, it, it's an insult because you're like, you, you work you just as hard, just as long um, as the men, harder sometimes because you're always proving, I, I'm going to hang, I'm on the show, I'm going to be able to hang with the guys as right. well. You know, right. I'm not coming there just to like, look pretty. I'm coming there to play some serious music and put my heart and soul into it just like the guys are you know yeah, and yeah. so I would like to think that yes I did knock down those doors for the other female musicians that are that are into into jazz and and I just want to say I wish we could have um together collaborating a little bit more than being mm -hmm. separate because I feel that separation I've approached some of the, the 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 female jazz saxophone players. I was like, let's do a project together, you know. And it's never happened, so <laughs> you know. That's a, that's I'm a, like, okay. That's a great idea. We need to somehow work on that. And I don't know. I, I will do whatever my part can be. And if, if you need help, be sure to let me know. Um, you said you put, spent some time with Patty Labelle. What was that like? Because. I've been in the audience and Patty goes, she sings one song and I got to take my shoes off and I got to get comfortable. And Patty's like really putting on a show. What, how are you affected by that? Uh, when I was in her band? Yeah, when you were in the band. From my perspective of being in, yeah, being right. in her band. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I asked that because I, I used to go to her shows like, I'm blown away in the audience. It's like, oh my God, she's, incredible and then when I had the opportunity <clears throat> to be on stage with her <clears throat> excuse me it was um it was an incredible experience I mean I spent eight years on the road with her um every night the show was phenomenal and you know she just had this thing about her where she could just take the all the whole audience right. and just make them like they just went to church they're in church <laughs> you know and people are falling out they're emotional they're laughing they're crying it, it was just incredible to just work with an artist like that to watch her impact and her 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 to grab her take music and use it to just really uplift people and I just watched her interaction with the audience and how real she was and down to earth Con considering the energy that she displayed, did that make you play better, harder, more aggressive because of her energy? Oh, sure. Oh, most definitely. How Absolutely. You, how, how do you do that? Great <laughs> how do you do that? I mean, I can, I can only imagine that after the show, 
Everybody's mm-hmm. exhausted. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh. Yeah, you 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 have to come down off of that. It's like you're on a high. So the audience is on a high, but you're on a high, too. And you're right. You, sometimes you can't come down. You, you know, you, you're tired at the same time, but you're right. also on that high. So it takes you a minute to, like, wind down before you have to go to sleep. And so... Um, yeah, absolutely. And sometimes, a lot of times the stuff was just spontaneous. Like, yeah, we, we had like long grueling rehearsals for what the show was going to be. But when we got out there, we didn't know like Patty was going to sing a certain, the same song every night. It was never 100% alike every night. The song, something was different in that particular song every night. And so we, a lot of it was just spontaneous. And I had the opportunity of doing like a lot of, uh, and, you know, she sings something and I'd, I'd be playing in between what she's singing. And so we do right. this back and forth thing. And, um, you know, as you know, if you, you know, if you don't know me by now was my feature. Oh. My main, my big song with her. And so, yeah, there's actually a video, there's a video of, um, of us doing that. We did it um, at the Apollo in New York. And so at the end of the show, I come out and I had this really long saxophone solo and, she you know, let me do my thing and then she would come in and we do this like training thing back and forth. It was, it was pretty intense. Wow. All right. Before we continue, we're going to go out and listen to another song. We're going to listen to Coast to Coast by the Saxtress, Pamela Williams. Pamela, I found something that was rather interesting to me, and from the numerous people that I have talked to, numerous musicians that I have talked to, they all kind of have a side hustle. That's what we'll call it, side hustle. Mm -hmm. You're an artist, which is, I saw some of your work. It is tremendous. (laughs) Thank you. And you want to go, how do you have time to do the artwork yet still play the saxophone and play it very, I mean, each are very, very well. You do each very well. When do you have time to, to paint and draw and all that sort of stuff? Um, I never sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I'm, I, I sleep, but I, I do, sometimes I don't get enough sleep because I'll stay up late because my brain is always thinking of something creative to do. Um, and when I, I just, um, I, been able to find time sometimes I'll have to put art on the side when I'm doing musical you know music stuff because with the traveling and being in the studio yeah it, it gets hard to juggle both of them at the same time but I um I just usually if I finish my musical project then I'm like okay I'm gonna I, I got time now I got some downtime from that so I'm just gonna do some artwork as a matter of fact I have like two paintings now that I'm getting ready to do that are like in the other room. <laughs> so I need to work on it, but yeah, but I'm ready, but I'm in the process of releasing a new single. So I'm also in the studio at the same time. So I have to just kind of like split up my time in between the two. I just want to be a fly on your shoulder and watch how you do all of this. Um, of going <laughs> from, from playing a saxophone to going over here, but you also, you, you write music, you produce music. I... Me, I'm not your typical. I'm not gonna say that. I, I I need you to get rest because I want more. I want more music. I want more artwork. <laughs> I, I I want more. So I don't I don't want you to be too tired. Not that you can't do any of this stuff. Um, what's what do you? So you've got the artwork. You've got music. Do you have anything else going on? Are you doing anything else? Uh. Yeah, <laughs> I've got another little project in the week. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, I got inspired to, because I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to write children's books because I think they're so important to the development of children and then the art thing and, and the stories with the 
with the pictures and then it's really something that can be a good learning tool for them. So I had um, gotten, a, I got inspired to do this, this book and I just started writing it and it just turned into like a, it's like a, a it's about colors, but it rhymes, the way it rhymes is, it just kept, I just went with it. I got my iPad and I was like, this is the start of something. It just popped in my head and I just started writing. I, I was, um, I was with my granddaughter and she wouldn't let me leave the room because she, you know, she didn't want to go to sleep. So she was right. like, stay with me. So I'm sitting mm -hmm. and she had the swirly, I used to have to put on, put this little swirly thing that makes all these colors in the right. ceiling. And I thought, I just started thinking about how pretty the colors were. And I started thinking, this could really be, I'm just going to write down my thoughts. And so I, that, so I'm saying all that to say, yes, that's something that I'm, I, I'm getting it done this year. I've been thinking about it for the, for a whole year and didn't get it done, but I'm doing it this year. Let us know when it's out and we'll do our best to uh, get it on our, our, our list of, of, of people that will see everything. You, yeah. you're, you're, you're a tremendous talent. Um, and, and I think you deserve more flowers. I think your music's tremendous. It. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I can get to California, I tell you what, you show up to Cleveland, I will bring you flowers. Okay, All right. I, I'm I will do that. that. I'm gonna be. Okay. I'm gonna knock on your door and be like, "I'm here in Cleveland." I said, Where are my come flowers? To, you, have, you have to come to Cleveland. I, I well, you I know, I lived in Cleveland for a while. You did what? Did you know that? Did you know I lived in Cleveland for a while? I just moved back from Cleveland, Ohio, in 2016. What? I'm like, we'll talk about that after okay. this, because okay. okay. I don't okay. want people okay. to know your address okay. or anything like that. <laughs> um, now. now so we probably have some of the same friends if you were here and doing music for a while. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk mm -hmm. about that. Um, so how can our, our folks follow you and find out about everything you're doing, whether it's music, whether it's artwork, and when the book comes out? Do you have a website? I do have a website, and it's www.pamelawilliamsthesaxtress.com. And they can, I'm on Instagram. Pamela okay. Williams, the Saxtress on Instagram. They can go there, Facebook. Okay. And that's pretty much it. That, that, that's, as long as we can follow I what you're doing. I haven't done TikTok yet. Uh, I see. <laughs> Everybody says it, you should be on TikTok. Why aren't and, you doing TikTok? And in that respect, you and I are a lot alike. Um, I do Facebook. I'll do Instagram. <laughs> You'll see a, um, yeah. um, a, a request from me probably later today. Um, it, it, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Like I said, I have, I think... And unfortunately, you can't see the rest of this room. And you see, that's George Howard. I see. You know, and you know, I'm looking at that. There's the album back there, the Grover Washington Live at yes. the Bijou. That yes. was the album that I think sparked my whole passion for the saxophone. That album right there. I always try to put something up that is reflective of of the interview and the artist. The George mm -hmm. Howard thing is. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh yeah, George in the back. Yes. Yeah, yes, love absolutely. will find a way. It's my favorite but you know, song. You know, him. it's kind of in the distance. And I should have recognized and just because yeah. you said it, I'm like, oh my God, that is George Howard because he's yeah. in the distance and I can't see the words. Right. It's but, actually, and yeah. it's, it's autographed. Okay. George and I were pretty good friends. He's the only person, only person. And I've, I've interviewed a whole bunch of folks. So George and I are talking and he did a cover version of a song. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, why did he choose that song? He goes, you got to turn your microphone off. You got to turn your tape recorder off. I'm like, what? Okay. Well, Obviously, I've said something I, wrong. He goes, no, I just don't want anybody else to know what I'm going to tell you. And, okay. And, and it was like, okay, fine. But I, he. Interesting. I, I have. <laughs> he was a great dude. He was a great cat. He was. Um, uh, but the, more, really and more, you, the more and more you talk to him, if I got relatively close. So, you know, he, he'd come to Cleveland. I actually met him in his whole. He flew in, went to the hotel. Daryl, come to dinner. Okay, not a problem. Not like I got anything else to do right okay. now. Drove out there. We okay. had dinner, uh -huh. and, and it was one of those things mm -hmm. where, dude, I got I got to go home. You know, it's a little late. I, I, and he just wanted to talk. He was that kind of guy that if sometimes if he had something on his mind, he just wanted to talk about it. But okay, that's it. So I I, I greatly appreciate appreciate the time. Um, like I said, if you come here, I'll have to give you flowers. Um, we have to talk about you living in Cleveland. 
I'm very interested <laughs> in that story. Okay. Uh, but Pamela, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate the time. Um, good you luck with welcome. the career, the books, the, the music, the artwork. How can you need to do a show? I, I ain't got a whole lot of money, but let me know how I might be able to purchase. I Some of those things are just excellent. Um, but the uh, the other thing is, it's amazing how many musicians have, for lack of a better term, side hustles. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and yours is an excellent one. <laughs> so Pamela, stay in touch. I'll be in touch. I'll send you notes every now and then. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, don't fall and try to break your shoulder anymore, okay? I won't. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay away from skateboards. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been, listen you've been listening to the Jazz Flight Podcast. We will talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I hope you enjoy the stories and soulful melodies that grew through the doors of time. If you want to stay connected with the latest updates and episodes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Until next time, I'm Daryl Scott. <laughs>